Okay, podcast listeners, I've got a very special guest with me today, Miss Kathleen McGuire from the McGuire O'Shea Academy of Irish Dance in London, England. Kathleen, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Good, great to have Hi. you. Yes, yeah, great to have you. So let's start off with talking about your Irish dance history. Well, oh, I started when I was six and I went on holiday with my aunt in Ireland and saw Irish dancing and... Um, I wanted to get up and do it straight away. And my aunt said, but you don't know how. And I went, yes, I do. And she said, look, I'll get mommy to take you when you go back home. So it took us a while to find an Irish dancing school. And we found one after a month or so. And I stayed with that teacher. She was unregistered at the time. I stayed with that teacher for about two and a half years. And we just did two fesh a year. New Elston, which was an outdoor fesh, and Bethnal Green, which was in York Hall, which became a big fesh in the end. Um, so then after two, two years, I saw a fantastic dancer called Nora Maloney, God rest her soul. Um, she had a green dress, which was the Kavanagh Academy. And I said, I want to do what she's doing. So I joined the Kavanagh Academy when I was nine, nine and a half. And it took us forever to find, because there was no internet or anything. Right. Um, and I stayed with him until I finished uh, my dancing career. Okay. And what was the name of your, your first teacher? Um, Kenneth Good. So talk about the history of Irish dance in London. Oh, it was um, the main fest really that I remember was Bethnal Green. And all the schools would join and, and go there. Um, obviously, there wasn't as many schools in those days. But what they did was we only had three age groups. So we had under 12, which was the minor, under 16, which was the junior, and then over 16 was the senior. So once you were 16 years of age, you had to dance against the 20 something up to, <laughs> I remember one competitor being 31. So um, yeah, it was just it's very hard. Like my first All Island that I won, there were 186 girls in it because there was just so many age groups. That's amazing. And, and so, uh, so you went from being a competitor and then you started teaching. Talk about how you got into teaching Irish dance. Um, well, after winning my third world championship, I decided I didn't want to go back and dance anymore because it was uh, very, very difficult. I was the first person to win the World Championship three times, so I didn't want to lose. And I never thought I was good enough, so I thought, no, let's get out while they're going. Um, so then by that time, I was already married because um, I was 21 when I won my last World. And then I went into teaching naturally uh, in the November of 1973. Um, and I, I started teaching locally in Ilford, and then somebody at my workplace said, oh, there's, there's a nun that I know really, really well, and I'd like you to do her a favor. She's putting on a concert. Would you put on some Irish dance? So then I met this wonderful nun who was like my guardian angel all my life, and her name was Sister Mary Lawrence, and she absolutely helped uh, stimulate our White Chapel class, which was the East End, and so many champions came out of that class. It was just unreal. Um, so I owe a lot to her. She's not with us anymore, but um, she really supported me every way. Okay. And so you, you say you won the World Championships three times. Now, if I understand correctly, you, one of your daughters won, uh, was it three times as well? Aren't you guys like the first yeah. ones to ever do that? Yeah, we're the only mother and daughter in the world to both win it three times. There is another mother and daughter that have both won it. Um, but... At the moment, we're, we're holding in there. <laughs> that, that's amazing. So as, as not just mother, but as, as teacher of this student that's won this World Championships three times, that's got to be an amazing feeling, and almost an unreal feeling. What, what sort of emotion did, did that bring to you to, to be able to say that you and your daughter both won three times and the only one that's ever done it? Yeah. No words. But, I mean, I owe everything to my husband because – he was a fantastic teacher, um, and I can honestly say he did help me win my last World Championship too, <laughs> even though I can't win the camera, and I, I, I know that 
it was wonderful to dance for him, but my husband really did help me win that last one. And obviously, uh, my husband and I were teaching all of our six children, because they had to come with us because we had so many children. Um, so, yeah, we, we were really lucky, and they worked hard. Okay. And, and talk briefly about the, uh, the formation of the McGuire and the O'Shea into that school that you have now. Oh, uh, that's really quite strange because um, my husband already had a really good dancing school and actually had a world qualifier in the first world championships, which was 1970. That was my first world championship. And he already had a world qualifier. So when we got married in 1972, he said, um, you know that you're still going to be the O'Shea school and I'm going to be the Maguire school. And I thought, hmm, okay. Um, and he said, well, when you've proved yourself as a teacher, then we can join up. <laughs> so uh, that's what I had to do. I had to, I had to do the homework. And he was a natural teacher. I found it really hard at first because um, I'd always been a dancer and a competitor. But... I'd never really sort of grasped how to actually pass that information on. But um, he taught me everything about teaching. Um, and I can only thank him for his success, Darren's, Katie's, all of them. They did so well, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's, that's good. You guys have, have a very, very good reputation uh, around the world. And so talk about some of the highlights of teaching so far from your origins and I think you said 1972 to now. What have been some of those highlights? Well, um, our first world champion was 1982 and we weren't expecting it. Uh, Julie Lachlan, she won the world championship. Um, it was just like a dream come to imagine being able to pass that on to a pupil was just incredible. And then Siobhan Lambert won it. Uh, she was under 14 at the time. She went on to be the lead in Riverdance. And then in 1999, um, David Bell would won his first world championship. And the same day, Ellie won her first world championship. So we didn't have many world qualifiers at that time, but two of them actually won in the same day. So that was just amazing. And then, like, to go on and have children in Riverdance, Lord of the Dance, and other great shows. And there was one particular day that Olivia Graydon did the lead. She's, she's the one that just did the steps for us just now on Zoom. Um, so she did the lead Spirit. Simona Moriella did the lead Bad Girl. And Ellie O'Sullivan did the lead Girl. And that was in the Playhouse in London. It was just like... Wow, imagine imagine having a job that you just absolutely love going to and the rewards have just been incredible. I just can't I just don't know how we're so fortunate. Exactly. How important is it to you to have uh, your husband, your partner, they're teaching with you. I mean, because a lot of people, their husband or their wife may do another job, uh, the other one may be a teacher. There are occasions where there are uh, husband and wife that teach together. How, how's that been for you? How, how's that kind of connected that bond between you? There's no way I would have survived as a teacher without him <laughs> because he just has a way with people. He's got an incredible sense of humor, um, but he's also very firm. And um, there was one particular time, I won't mention the names because one of them is quite well known, um, we're three in the same age group. And it didn't go well. They were really, really big, big notch champions like North American champion, Great Britain champion, British national champion, and they just didn't get on. And my husband said, "Look, if you, if this gets any worse, he said, you will all be gone." And he, and he meant it. He said, "We've had better dancers before you, and we'll have better dancers since." And nobody messed around because they knew that he was the best. He really is the best and he just has a way with people. He's not a bully, it's just he's firm and he's fair. And I honestly think I I haven't got the um got the confidence to to deal with those sort of situations, but he just nips it in the bud straight and way. So yeah, it, it worked out well. They all, all ended up staying and didn't get thrown out. Talk about 
the mentality that you have to have as a teacher when you have a school, a very successful school like yours, you've got lots of great dancers, whether they're, they're your, your children or whether it's just normal, uh, normal pupils. You're going, as you said, your husband, you know, has to be fair, but firm sometimes. Talk about the teaching philosophy you have to have to keep all those egos of those good dancers in check and not taking over your class. Yeah. Yeah. It can be difficult because especially if you get somebody that's looking for attention, um, it's best not to give any one individual, no matter how good they are, it's not right to give one child more attention than the other in a class because they're all paying the same money. And we allow parents into the class, not all the classes now, um, but we used to let them into all the classes so that they could see that it was fair. Um, that way nobody could ever complain, you know, and we wanted them to do them. Right. Right. And, and what about having so many of your, your own children as now as teachers and judges, that's gotta be an amazing accomplishment. It's absolutely crazy. Um, our eldest boy, he won the all Ireland when he was quite young. He, he won everything, he won every title, but he got second in the world, but he did then end up doing history dance. So, um, yeah, Darren, there's Darren. In fact, none of them escaped. Uh, Sean got fourth in the world and won the Great Britain. Katie got third in the world twice, but she won the North Americans twice. Michael was a world not a competitive dancer. He was a, a really good Kaylee dancer and won world medals for that. But my goodness, when he went into shows, he was something else. He was just, he just transformed. He... I remember once Michael, my husband, was teaching him a set dance and he put a spin into his set dance. And um, all of a sudden it was like a light switched on for Kieran. And uh, oh, this is really my granddaughter. She's a good dancer too. She's just been learning prodigy. Um, so, Kieran, yeah, Michael put a spin into his set dance and he a light switched on. And he, then he suddenly started to become interested. It was um, a bit too late for him to become sort of like world standard, although he's qualified for the world, but to get placed in the world. But once he came to and I have to mention Colin Dunn and Jean Butler, because when he went into Dancing on Dangerous Grounds, uh, they just brought out so much talent in him that was really like, it, it had the air, but it just didn't. He didn't, ha- he didn't have that will to know, whereas when he went into that show, he was doing everything that he could to, as good as he could. And he was one of Gene's bodyguards. There were only four, and there was about 15 world champions behind him. So thank you, Gene and Colin. I will never do here. And then uh, our youngest, as you know, uh, yeah, they all danced. And so to now have them go from show, well, from competition to shows to teaching and, and, Going into, I'm assuming, like I know Darren teaches here in the States, and I think your your other children teach with you and maybe in other places. What's it like knowing that they're carrying on those traditions and teaching them? Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Anyone that does that now is Sean. And um, the weirdest thing, I mean, I'll go back to the other five in a minute. Um, the weirdest thing is Flynn, our grandson in America, his best friend does Irish dancing. And he has his hands by his side and he's doing it. And Sean was the one that didn't go on to be an adjudicator or a teacher because he's an actor and he's doing well at the acting he's in Los Angeles. Um, but what's it like to have them all dance? It's just incredible. Um, as you know, Darren is teaching in America. Uh, Sean's the actor in Los Angeles. Katie, the teacher with us, um, my husband and I, although we have separate classes, we teach the McGuire Academy in London, and then Deirdre and Michael got an adult dancing class and a class in Switzerland. So Deirdre's doing that by herself now because my school teacher, um, but they are all involved all the time. So really, really, really pleased that it's it's broadening. You know. It's all right, and and so talk about uh, your experiences watching Irish dance from you know, watching it progress from the time when you first started to the way it is now, it's, it's got to have changed tremendously. It's just unbelievable. Um, I am so glad that there isn't a video of me dancing 
<laughs> in my day because um, obviously the steps have got so difficult now. I mean, I was just learning the step from Olivia just now. It was just it's unreal that the feet can move that fast, you know. My steps were so easy that uh, perhaps a primary dance could do them. And, and our steps didn't change. I did the same for Kenny races for every single year. So, uh, yeah, it was, it's evolved so, so, so much. Um, I think the big thing for us was when we saw a seven-minute slot of river dance. Right. Um, when they were doing the, you know, the, the Irish, um, oh gosh, the name's gone from my head now. The but Eurovision? yeah, it was the seven minute insult. Yes, that's it, yeah, the, the Eurovision. And that to go and watch the show, and then Darren and Katie joined in 1994. And I remember St. Patrick's Day, 96, Michael and I flew out to Radio City and watched them both. I, I just... I was just there and walking up the red carpet and just walking into this arena with all these famous people in the audience. Like, it was unbelievable, it really was. Yeah, it, it's really fantastic. So, would your when you and your husband uh, are are working with your top dancers and you're getting them ready for World Qualifiers All Ireland's a major competition, and you're choreographing a new piece. How do you talk talk about the process that you you guys go through to come up with what would probably be some of the best some of the best most competitive steps out there? What how do how do you get your creative juices going? Well, I'm I'm going to be totally honest with you there. Um, I used to make up steps when the children were younger, um, but it was always Michael that made up the steps, and now it's Katie and Ellie. They just have this incredible flair. And I, I couldn't compete with what they're doing. I mean, like, they can make up stuff like that. that is, and, like, you look at it and you think, how do they do it? I, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I, I don't have that talent. But um, definitely, Ellie and Katie are just very, very natural at making up the stuff. So, yes. Right. So, so as a judge, when you're judging dancers, whether it's at the local FET, whether it's beginners or advanced dancers or the next world champions out there, what do you look for? Um, well, after judging the world championships years ago, I now realize that if somebody's not really, really high on their toes, in other words, if they dance and land with a heel that lands nearly on the floor, it's almost like it's a process of elimination and in a split second you can go gone 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 um i think high toes in the soft dancing is an absolute must um i remember judging it and sort of like it, people think it's very 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 difficult to judge a championship and it is but that's what I look for in light dancing. And heavy dancing, it's the rhythm. My favourite dance is the horn pipe. And the rhythm is absolutely, it has to be crystal clear that the second beat is slower. So it's treble, not the that. It's not like a tap dance treble. And I can hear whether it, the rhythm is correct. Even if there's three on the stage, you, you, you can just be tuned into it. I do love judging, I do love judging, but I am i don't know, and some people would be horrified to think that I don't know every single world champion in the world. <laughs> it's fun. Um, but um, I don't need to know what you've won before, I'm there to judge on the day what they're performing for me. So I think it's the only fair way, and I, I think it's that there are some people that feel they have to know who ex champions are. I don't that's it's not fair. Right. I think if you're a good adjudicator, you're not gonna miss them. So as far as looking at Kaylee teams, what goes in your mind when you're when you're trying to sort out the best Kaylee team from everybody else? Just that they all are at the same level, that they don't jump higher than each other. If there's a hand that's a little bit bait, um, they all have to be at the same, same height. Um, and grace, you know, a nice graceful style. 
There's some beautiful Kayla teams now. Beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The World Championship this year, but you know, there was nothing anyone could do about it. Sure. Just one sure. of those things. Right. How do you think the show dancing has changed Irish dancing? Oh, it has changed incredibly. It really has because now there's something other than competitions for people to work towards. Um, if they love dance, um, I mean, we must have gone to see River Dance 80 times. <laughs> but five of our children were in River Dance. So obviously, any parent would want to go and see their child. So we traveled to Berlin, to Baltimore, to New York, anywhere where they are, we saw them dance, you know. So, uh, yeah, it, it would have changed it a lot. And it gives us gives something to think, well, that's my dream. That's what I'm going to work for. Right. As far as Irish dancing has come, and it's come a long way, and, and the steps, have, as you say, have become so difficult, the ability that you have to have, physical ability you have to have to execute at a high level, where do you see it going? Because if you ask people, you can look back and they'll say, if they would have asked them 10 years ago, oh, I don't think it could get any better than it is now. But you, people have been saying that forever. So where do you think it's going to go in the next five to 10 years? I, th- I really, I don't know how the steps can get any more difficult because <laughs> how would you put it into music? That's why it's good that they've got like set dances. They're not letting them go any slower than 76. Otherwise we'd be there all day. Um, and, and like to have the stamina to keep going for longer and longer and longer. I mean, there used to be a judge years ago, before my time, that she used to put the music on and she used to let them dance until somebody would stop and the last man standing was was the winner. Now, I, that was Nellie Sweeney. That would have been my teacher's teacher, but obviously you don't do that now. So uh, I, I just don't know how they can make the steps any more difficult because I don't know how to fit any more into the music. Sure, sure. So your school, you, you as yourself and your husband and your family as teachers inspire a lot of people. Who inspires you? I've got to say my husband, Michael. He, he, wasn't, um, he wasn't a champion dancer. He has this natural ability to perform. I remember saying to him once, do you ever, do you ever try to get like first and he just laughed and said and I said well well do do try do try and then the next fish in a solo competition he beat me in the jig so I was like okay too much too much help <laughs> no I, I he, he has helped me become a teacher become a, a, a better dancer um the children all inspire me because they're such a great help what is your advice for dancers who may want to teach in the future? Just never give up. Um, I, I, I can honestly say, if you're starting off doing a class, just be honest with them and give them your best. And it, do, it does take about five years, I think, um, to sort of like mold your own style. And my, my best advice would be, don't take transfers until you are really, really established, and only then. Um, it would, I think, it will spoil your own style if you bring in champion dancers within a, a few months. It's, it's not fair on your own school because you're you're not developing your own style. Right. Okay. And so for teachers who think they may want to be a judge one day, what's your advice for aspiring judge candidates? Oh, definitely for it. It is the most, it is the most amazing job. And, you, you know, it's extremely hard to get your adjudicator's exam. And um, I think they're making it more and more and more difficult. Um, but it is, it's got to be one of the best jobs in the world. You get to travel the whole world and, and meet people that have got a similar background to you. And you won't get on with everybody. You know, there are some people that just, they don't want to be friendly. That's fine, you know. Um, but no, you definitely go for it. It's got, it's got to be the best job. So long as they're fair, they've got to be fair. Exactly. So for what about for dancers who have reached the end of their competitive milestone and they're thinking, do I do a show? 
Do I teach? Do I hang my shoes up? How about advice for them? Um, well, it's, it's quite funny because when I went to Brazil as a grade examiner, um, I had advice from the commission saying, encourage them to do more grade exams. And I didn't understand the importance of it until I got to Brazil, although I've been a grade examiner for a while, um, because the Brazilians, fantastic as they are, all wanted to do show dancing. And because they were jumping from learning steps to doing show dancing, they weren't breaking down the rhythm the way it should be done. So after, after visiting there, and I had a wonderful experience, um, I, I realized that you're not going to become a great teacher if you go straight from competitive work into show dancing. You've got to learn, and you learn yourself while you're teaching your pupils because you think, well, that's not right. I'm, I'm not explaining it right. I must try a different way. Um, and then you'll get some children that will want to be at the front of the class and other kids that will stay at the back. And you might have other kids at the back that are very, very bright, but they're just not, they don't want to become forward in, in the class. So you have to involve every teaching. It teaches you a lot about dancing and it teaches you how difficult it is. It's not easy teaching. Exactly. And so looking at the pandemic that we're still very much involved with right now and the changes that's had to schools, to classes, to teachers and everything and to students, how do you see that changing Irish dancing and the way we, the way teachers teach? Do you think there are going to be lasting effects or is this all going to be temporary and we'll get back to normal? I hope it's temporary. I mean, we're lucky that we're doing Zoom classes because obviously we want the children to stay fit. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be active. Not everybody has a garden. So it's great for the kids to see their, their classmates online. Um, and we've got quite a selection of Zoom classes that we do, you know, daily. Um, and we offer things like learning something different. Like we had a family quiz on Sunday, just so that everybody interacts with everybody. Because as I said, not everybody's got a garden. So it's difficult for the children that might be an only child and they live in a flat. But if they've got their dancing, they've got a focus. And it's our job to, to keep that, that mould going, to encourage the children to dance, if that's what they want to do. Sure. Talk briefly about the impact that you've seen Irish dance have on students. Oh, it's just, um, it, it's, it's, it's a gift. That's the only way I can describe it. It's a gift because if they get it, um, not everybody will be great straight away. But I have one particular pupil who uh, didn't recall at her first qualifiers, didn't qualify the second year, even though she was, she should have done, then went to the world after that, and then won the Great Britain the year after that. Uh, but after not recalling twice, I thought, she's going to give up. She's going to give up. Yeah. But she didn't. She kept going, and now she's one of the best dancers. Um, and her jumps are just amazing. <laughs> it certainly helps give dancers confidence and, and, and teaches them lots of life lessons, for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think there isn't, there isn't a dancer, it, once you've, you've gone through the drilling of, learning everything there isn't a dancer that wouldn't be able to walk into any job and not be able to nail down a job because it gives them confidence it gives them sociability it gives them um i was a very shy child and that's always was as a competitor but it's made me into a, a much more um i think much more confident person now can you think of anything, any stories that you think would be interesting to folks that um, memorable times in your dance, whether it was a, as a dancer or as a teacher or as a judge, things that you look back on and very fond memories, great experiences that maybe shaped your, 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 your teaching career? Um, well, there's one memory, my, my first like really big memory, um, which a lot of people witnessed was the first time I won the world championship. And we were in a, a, a hall called Colossum in Dublin, 
and my dad came with me and when the result came out there was um uh, a colleague of mine john brooks god rest him he lifted me up onto his shoulders and brought me up to the stage and my dad walked up with his arms up like this because i'd won the first world championship and I remember Carol Scanlon from Birmingham saying there was not a dry eye in the house. It was just the most emotional, emotional feeling. It really was. Uh, I have so many, so many that I, I cry a lot. Everybody will say I'm quite an emotional person. Um, yeah. And when Lily, our granddaughter, she, um, she qualified for the world. This is Lily. Oh, hello, Lily. She qualified for the world this year, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. But she's a great dancer and she's, we're going to get to see her dance next year. Okay, awesome. She qualified for the world and it was 50 years since my first time I'd been at the world. It was like, oh, wow. <laughs> so. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kathleen, I greatly appreciate the time that you've taken to talk about your history uh, as a dancer, as a teacher, and as a judge, and the advice that you give in the next generation. You're very welcome. Um, as I said, I don't know whether my advice will be any good, but um, it was a journey that I have deeply enjoyed every minute. Um, there, there isn't anything I wouldn't do again in the dancing. It was just Awesome. Really good. Really good. Great. Great. And I wish you all, you and your school, your family, all the best successes in the future. Thank you so much, Richard. And I appreciate your, your interest. Thank you.